Welcome everyone. Um, today is July 18th on a Sunday. Thanks for joining me. Um, I'm going to be going over my strategy, um, how I play takers, and generally just my edge on um, with the market. So I've uh, split this um, lesson up into four parts. So the first part being daily resistances and how to find them. Um, the second one being charting and what to look for. Um, this includes higher lows, volume, and patterns. Um, the third part being VPA signals, so volume price analysis. Um, this all came from reading Anna Colling's books on VPA, which I strongly recommend. And the last part, um, tra transitions into scaling, and um, that also ties into risk management. So. Um, so that, that would be 40 minutes and then we'll spend the last 20 on Q and a, um, yeah, I'm not a financial advisor, so this is all for, um, education and entertainment purposes. I'm not telling you guys to buy or sell any stocks or commodities or anything. So this is all for education and entertainment. So, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll go over some tickers that ran this week. Um, I'm currently using Weevil just for charting because I, I like the user interface with Weevil compared to um, Interactive Brokers um, Trader Workstation. Um, so yeah, we'll go over um, some tickers. If you guys have any tickers that you guys want to go over, um, we'll definitely, um, that ran this week, um, some, something like RCAT or um, SCOC or, you know, something that everyone knows and that everyone has, most of the people that, that have played. But we'll go over um, RCAT for now. Um, so you're probably wondering, you know, when I'm... Sorry, if if, um, if someone can mute their mic. That'd be, uh, that'd be good. Um, but you, you guys probably are wondering how, how I get these levels. Um, you know, when we're playing them, um, you know, I'll, I'll say in the classroom while we're playing them, look for this level, watch this level, um, et cetera, et cetera. And there'll be very key levels. So what I usually do is, you know, they're called daily resistances for a reason, right? Um, they're key resistance points at daily levels. So sometimes I'll look at the weekly and the monthly for, for stronger, for stronger levels. Um, so I'll do that, you know. So the first thing I'll, I see is this 370 level for RCAT, right? It's, you see the spike. Um, so I, I generally wanna go from bottom right to top left. So we'll, we'll ch take that off. We'll, um, you know, we'll mark that. Um, another level I see is this 550 level. Um, and in the beginning, I, you know, you might have some trouble, you know, getting these levels down, but you, you generally want to, what's it called? Plot down the, the key levels, right? You, you're not, you're not getting like random levels like this or like right here, right? You want to get key ones that stick out the most. So, so far we have four and you don't want to have too many, right? Cause then that'll just be very confusing. So, the, so far we have some key levels, right? Um, and then this is a pretty wide gap right here. So um, I'll mark this down right here. Um, and without cheating, right? You don't wanna, you wanna look cause before any of this happens, you have no idea where it's gonna go. Um, but we'll just do this really quickly cause I've been just rambling on, but we'll just do this real quickly and um, go over intraday what happened. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any questions and whatnot, go ahead and you, you can unmute your mic or whatever, or s say something in the main classroom if you guys have any questions so far. But so far we have 370s, 475, 550s, 6, 71, and then 775. So we'll go to the five minute, um, and on the first day this ran. Um, so as you can see, like these levels are even like till Friday, they were very heavily respected. Um, 
But I remember on this day, um, Gino's and I, we played this, um, you know, this is a clear A, B, C, D pattern. We have A right here, B right here, a higher low um, set right here. So this is the C. Um, so we have our C level right here and then our D, which is a breakout. So as you can see, like, if we go on the three minute, um, it'll show clearer or clearer levels, but so as you can see, like people, people FOMO and that's not the way to go, right? You never want to FOMO into a trade. So when this, when this halts up, you know, you always want to wait for a pullback. And this also ties into VPA. Why is this candle so small when this, when the, when there's huge, when there's a three mil volume stick, right? So this is a huge indication that some, some kind of pullback is, is going to come soon. Right. Um, so here's our pullback. Um, right. Sure. You can try to catch this bottom, but you know, that's how you lose the fortune if you try to catch the bottom. So let the low set, this is our risk off level right here. Um, this is pretty much textbook, right? Low volume pullback, volume phase off, our low set, um, our risk is set right here. So if you're entering right here, um, this, your stop loss would be just under here, right? Um, so this is where Gino's and I entered. Um, and you know, we scaled out along the way, um, at these daily resistances. And I personally, um, this ties into scaling. Um, so this hammer candle right here, kind of confirms, Hey, there's, there's strength right here. Right? So that's just extra confirmation that, okay, this is where I want to be scaling in. So sure. You can put, um, you can put your full position in here, or you can start, you know, start scaling in, um, averaging down, averaging up around here. Um, this is where I personally entered and then just ride the move all the way up. And that was a, almost a 50% move. Um, just bit going off these daily resistances and the 3.7 level was also a level that I was watching, um, possibly for it to retrace, but it never came. So that low was set right there and made a nice little double bottom, higher low double bottom. Um, and we just scaled out. So, You might be wondering why, how, how do you know, how do you know if the top set? So, um, just going based off of, um, VPA signals. Um, you know, we have, you might be wondering, Hey, um, Vamps, you just said, um, if you have a small candle and a small, uh, I mean a small candle and a large volume stick then that signals weakness. Sure. And we get one right here, right? Everyone can see, Hey, this might be a VPA anomaly. Um, but you also have to take into context the, the big picture of the chart and the big picture of the chart is saying, okay, we have a daily resistance at 75, right? But this can, this candle just closed above the daily resistance. Um, and the, the whole, the whole, um, the big picture of the chart is that we have an ABCD setup, right? So everyone's anticipating this breakout. And if we have a candle close over the 75 level, and this is something Callum has taught me and James has taught me, everyone's saying, okay, this candle has closed over this, this, this resistance. So that's just signaling strength. It's not signaling any type of weakness, right? And sure, we have some topping volume, the next candle, but still we have room to the upside. Um, so generally this is where you want to be scaling up, but we have a 550 level. That's, um, that's, uh, that's, that's, um, overhead. So for sure you want to be scaling out here. I know I remember getting out my full position at the five fifties. Sure. I could have let it ride for um, 50 more cents, but 
just how I play is I always scale out a quarter at 5%. So that's what I do. And then I always scale out another quarter at 10 and then the third quarter at um, 15 to 20. And then I, I let the rest ride for, for however long um, up until a next daily resistance. And that's how I played RCAT. Um, but this, does anyone have any questions so far? Yeah, I have a quick question for you, Vamps. For uh, sure. How often do you use the three minute? I'm mostly on the five minute, but I'll switch time frames into three minute if I'm entering or exiting a position. So just to ha just to be dialed in more. Do you do you kind of get what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I absolutely get that. Uh, so that's interesting to me because, uh, like, I guess people have always said that they mainly watch the five and like. Uh, they'll use like the one for entries and exits. So what makes you want to use the three as opposed to the one? Um, I've tried the one minute. It's just way too much noise for me. And um, I'll just, it's just way too much noise. And, and it kind of freaks me out when there's patterns that, that form on the one minute that aren't really relevant. And that's just yeah. personally, that's just personally for me. And also, you guys are probably wondering, hey, there's no, you got, you're not using any indicators. Well, I have VWAP up, and so it, you know, more power to you if you if you use indicators. I know great traders that use indicators, like you know, Ace uses indicators, Mullen, you know, Gary, whatnot. But for me, naked charting has been working the best for me, and it just helps with reading price action a lot better, um, and. I can just see the candlesticks a lot clearer and um, patterns more clear when when using, you know, just just VWAP. So, anyways, um, what was I saying here? Okay, so um, going back to RCAT. So this candle should be a huge, huge, huge red flag. So we have some topping volume, right? We have topping volume met. Um, around here so as you can see like this was so far like three mil three mil three mil and we have another three mil uh, volume stick right but look how small this look how small this candlestick is relative to to how large this volume is right um if you've read um anna calling's books on vpa this is a huge red flag right just picture a car going up an icy hill it's it's it has so much volume yet the candle is so small. This candlestick is pretty much like the size of like one of these, right? If you guys can, can you guys see my mouse? Yeah, we can, we can. Yeah, so that's a huge red flag to get out. And what happened, you, you can kind of see what happened. This, this dropped like what, like 30%. So I'm not saying that the, the chart's completely done because, right? Because you know, a couple of days later, we have a huge rally in price, but it's just, um, if you're in from below, from let, let's say like, like the fours, you, you really want to be getting out most of your position once you see this candle right here. Um, so this is, this is a, um, a spinning, a spinning top. So this is like a high wave, um, spinning top candle. Um, So that's, uh, we just went over the four parts of the, the lesson. Does anyone have any questions for, for RCAT? We can go over what happened on Friday as well. Um, you're just using the same daily resistances. So um, these DRs are, are, are very respected throughout, um, you know, throughout history of the, of the ticker, right? Um, and they'll will, they will be respected in the future as well, right? So. It's always great to have them up. Um, you don't want to have, you know, too much because it, then it'll just be noise, right? You want to have key levels that will, um, that are that aren't, you know, too much for um, for scaling in and whatnot. Because you want to use these levels for for, uh, for levels that are good for scaling in and out of. Um, so let me just drink some water. So, yeah, no, you're good. What's up? Uh, can, I ask you, can I ask you kind of a quick question? What's up, man? 
Hopefully it's quick. Um, so I've asked a few people this question. It just hasn't yet resonated with me, I guess. So I keep trying to see if uh, anybody can kind of give me a perspective that, that kind of helps illuminate it for me. So what degree do you kind of watch um, a day trade and kind of think about whether or not it uh, would have potential to go into the next day? Are you, are, are you looking for that usually or do you usually wake up in the morning and kind of just see what's going on? Um, so if, so your question is, how do I know if it has continuation? Yeah, that, that was ultimately going to be the question. It's like, what do you look for to think that, okay, this right. might have some continuation into tomorrow. All right. So if we go into the daily, right, we, we see a huge, like 75, 75 mil volume stick. And that's that's a huge indication of hey something's going on you, you want to keep this on your watch list because there, there will always be some kind of continuation whether it be a huge sell off the next day and then another ramp 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 up um you know two days later so we have this rule called the three day rule um in atlas that we always used to talk about which was you know a huge move up the first day and then two days later I mean, three days later, a huge ramp back up. So that, that kind of happened with RCAT. So we had a huge move up the first day. And then what happened on the third day? One, two, three. We had a huge move up. We had a 55% um, move. So you always want to keep, um, keep a watch list of runners that run, um, you know, just, just on the side on a notepad somewhere. Um, and this also ties into the, the inside bar, right? Um, if you have a sell off the next day and it stays in within um, the mother candle, you, you want to keep it on your watch list. So especially if there was some kind of PR and what kept um, our cat on my watch list was, you know, they're not going to PR for no reason, right? These guys need a, these guys came from the OTC market and they need to raise some capital and they had a shelf. They had an offering just sitting there, just a juicy offering, just waiting to be like dropped. And we saw that on Friday night. Um, so these guys will, this is what um, Mello always talks about. They bring it down, they bring it all the way back up to a point where, hey, we need to, we need to raise some money for the, um, the company. And then they just drop an offering. They don't do this for no reason, right? Um, so you want to look at like the big, big, big picture of, Hey, what's going on here? If there was no news, sure. Maybe, um, maybe, I don't know. You still want to keep it on your watch list because there's volume coming in. Everyone's going to remember that ticker. Um, I remember a time in April where everything was just really cold. We had a runner and then the next day it would just sell off all day and no one would, you know, remember it. But after TRCH, ALF, we had a lot of continuation, especially with Emrin you know, like neg, you, you generally at this, like during this whole week, you, we had a lot of continuation. So you always want to look at the, the, the condition of the market as well. Um, so those were kind of like my reasonings for keeping our cat on my watch list. Another huge thing was if you go on the two hour, like the four hour, or like even like the one hour we had, you know, it was holding up pretty well. Right. So on the four hour, this was flagging for like two, two days, three days. This was creating a, um, like an ascending triangle. So when it broke out, you know, everyone was watching this. Um, and that's what helped with my, helped my conviction on Friday to play this as well. The run up on Friday. Um, does that kind of answer your question? No, oh, yeah, it absolutely answers it. And I think it helps bring it kind of back to at least a little bit to my frame of view right now, which is mainly on technical analysis. And, and you gave me some pretty concrete things to look for. So I really appreciate it. Oh yeah. Um, Question, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. What's up? When, when you say topping volume, what do you mean by topping volume? That's part A. And then part B, when, when you showed your exit on RCAT, it looked like a hammer candle, that short top. Maybe I have too much glare on my screen. I don't know. So a ham. This are you talking about this candle right here? Okay. Well, yeah, exactly. We'll, yeah. Okay. We'll go over topping volume first, and then we'll go over um, uh, the the hammers and whatnot. So topping volume. So as you can see, 
Hang on. I, I, I see the wick coming out the top now. Okay. I see that. I, I didn't see the wick coming out the top of that candle at first. Now but, I see it. Okay, okay but... So that, that makes perfect sense. No, but still, but still, a hammer, okay, on a, a hammer on a downtrend, so like a hammer right here, for example, a hammer on a downtrend is a bullish signal. A hammer on an uptrend, like where it's on the top of a, on the top of a, um, a trend, that's a, that's a bearish signal, especially when you have so much volume. Like, why is this volume stick, why is this candles, why is this candle so narrow, right? It should be, it should be something large like, like this or like this, right? If, if we have so much volume coming in, why is this why is this candle so small? So that's a huge red flag. It should be it should be larger, and you'll see this time and time like over and over and over again. And it, it won't just be these kind of candles. Uh, this is called a um a high wave or spinning top type candle. You'll see you'll see hammers and you'll see hanging mans, which are um inverted hammers. So um. Let me just let me just finish answering his question. Um. So, so if we if we have a large um, a large body candle like something like this or like this with large volume, then that's not that's that is not an anomaly, right? But if we have such large volume, why is it so small? So that's a huge red flag it's signaling. Hey, this might be the end of, the end of an uptrend. Um. And also to answer your question on topping volume, so. So the topping volume is pretty much just exhaustion volume. Um, so we have a three mil volume stick right here. We have a three mil volume stick right here. Um, so that's that's topping volume right here or a breakout volume. But topping volume is just pretty much when when the volume is top tops out and just can't goes any further up. Um, does that answer your question, sir? Yeah, I think perfectly. So so. That, that candle had as much volume as anything else during the day and it didn't move and, and now I see the I, I, I just couldn't see the wicks on the top and bottom of that little body there um, and I see them now so I what what you said made perfect sense now I just like I said I didn't see the wick so that's why I had a question so that makes perfect sense people got scared of that resistance and started selling I guess then right it moved up a little bit yeah yeah and and, huh? and 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 look at and look at um there was a daily resistance you know I, I drew these out um, and also it was a psychological whole number, right? Six. Everyone's looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, six was a huge psychological number, right? Um, and yeah. And also just because it doesn't, sometimes you won't even see a wick. Sometimes you'll just see a body hanging over and you'll see a hanging man or a, um, a hammer. A ha even a hammer candle right here would have been bearish. Um, sorry. Someone also had a question. Um, yeah, I was, I was gonna ask. Oh, What's up? On that uptrend, on that uptrend over there, back to where you're at. Like, you right. see those like big red candles. Those those aren't engulfing artists, or are they close to engulfing? So, an, an engulfing candle is when a bearish engulfing is when it completely engulfs. So, um, no, this would kind of be like a piercing candle. Sorry. Left, like how to the left of it. You know how you see those, like you have the nice uptrend, and you have almost a, a bearish engulfing. Engulfing, I guess it needs to close and open above. This this candle right here. Yeah, and the one above it, the like that one, and then the one behind it. You know what I mean? On that uptrend. This one. Well, both of them. So engulfing is when is when it completely engulfs the um, entire um, body and wick. So the, these one have been even on the five minute we can kind of see the anom anomaly. You don't have to look at the three minute or like the one minute. Um, they all tell the same story. So even here, right? Look how large this volume is, and look how small this the body is. That's still a huge um, red flag. You don't have to look at three minute and whatnot. Um, sometimes I even flip to the ten minute and on. Um, I remember on what was it Verb. People were, I'm not gonna say any names, but people were entering right here, and I'm like, I, I said on I said on the floor, I was like, not on the floor, in the classroom, I was like, guys, like, look at look at the volume and look at the candlesticks, and what happened? We had a huge knife. I tried to save you guys, but. Sometimes you just have to 
through experience you you see these and and you have to flip through time frames because you know you might you might be tricked right um but even this would kind of be like an engulfing a bearish engulfing um but that's on verb we were just looking at our cat does anyone have any other questions on our cat if not we can we can go over um another ticker or yeah i was just gonna add that i think those candles that he was looking at are more akin to like piercing uh candles but i think if you look at them uh i didn't get a clear look at the volume but it looks like those red candles are actually lower volume uh, significantly lower volume um so that would be an indication that even though you're kind of getting a, a body there it's not actually a very strong move downward yeah yeah let me just flip to the three minutes so we can just go back to what we we're talking about um but even if um so yeah if, the, if there's high selling volume then it's a huge indication so we had a one mil volume stake and it was just red right and after that it just knifed um we can go we can go over our account up with what happened on friday if you guys want um so we can start charting this as well so you can see like these daily resistances daily resistances are are extremely respected right it holds this um 75 level that we drew out you know a couple of days ago um you know spikes in the morning um sells off so you know but it still holds this higher low right this is what you want to be looking at so so i don't really need any indicators right if, if it's if it's holding a higher low then that's just proving that hey bulls are still in in control of this um this uh this ticker right um and we just consolidated all day and like i was talking about um if we looked at the four hour this was a bullish trend for like three days straight so it was already kind of proving the thesis of hey it's holding this this bullish trend um and it's holding an uptrend all day on low volume so this is all low volume cons consolidation right making higher highs and higher lows holding a higher low you know now it's now it's respecting this 0.5 daily resistance right it's trying to hold this 0.5 and once we get over vwap it's still consolidating over vwap um sorry and what do we get here we kind of get this flag all right breaks over this flag now it starts flagging again we have a some breakout volume um and you're probably asking wondering hey vamp isn't this topping volume right here yeah it's topping volume but what did i just say before the four hour chart right everyone's anticipating a huge move up so for sure you want to be scaling out right here right if you're in from down here or even down here you want to be scaling out along the way especially at these daily resistances or even before six psychological number before this was supply remember um so that was supply but everyone's anticipating the breakout right so we get some consolidation right here um it's these lower wicks are con confirming strength we're not getting some some crazy high wicking up top so it's still holding this this trend and we also kind of get this um this bull flag right or ascending triangle or whatever you want to call it it's, it's still still flagging um and then yeah we got a we got a huge move up and right here um you can even go back to the chat i said hey look watch this um watch this softening volume and watch this uh candle right here and we kind of get a little dip but holds the 71 level and it just um you know it kind of rallies back up but this is that's when they drop the offering pretty dirty um we can go over a couple more tickers other than rcat just uh because we've just been talking about rcat for 30 minutes but does anyone have any other questions with rcat um but but yeah that's how i go over just a quick question uh that section where you saw see the uh the long wicks before it makes its break out there i mean what what they all that bot right there yeah you see all those bottom wicks and a lot of topping wicks i mean what what kind of does that signify a lot of buying but there's also a lot of selling right how would you kind of interpret those for sure so so as you can see we had this daily resistance plotted out like 
you know, days ago, or these are very respected levels, right? And if it if it breaks above this level, look at look at this body right here. It breaks above this level and it holds. It's not. So I also forgot to say these daily resistances. They're not sure. Sometimes they'll come right to the penny and they won't break below it. Like you'll just see them. You'll just see them come and then bounce right off. But most of the time they act like rubber bands, right? You you kind of want to picture them as rubber bands. Well, where it, it peaks below, you know, and it keeps peaking below, but it holds. Peaks below, holds. Peaks below, can't breaks down anymore. So just sit, think of, think of them as um, think of it as like a sponge where it just soaks. This is called soaking right here, where it's soaking up all of the, all of the, all of the orders, right? It's soaking up, soaking up. So we have, we have some. You know, we can label that as supply. You know, breaks breaches above supply, but it's not breaching any. It's not breaching below um, this 80 level. It's holding this 80 level, or even this 90 level. So to me, this is still bullish because this is holding higher lows, right? Higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. So to me, this is still a bullish trend. Um, sure, it's getting knocked back down, knocked back down, but it's it's breaching the supply right here. It's trying to do something. And finally, we get a full breach, a little pullback, and then a ramp back up, or a ramp to new highs. Um, sure, you can look at the level two, but Sure, you can look at the level too, but look, previous supply turns into demand. Doesn't even touch, doesn't even touch previous supply. All right. So always keep in keep in mind um, supply levels, demand levels, daily resistance. So that's what that's what I look for. Um, this is like a this is a bull flag. It doesn't even touch previous supply or previous resistance. And if it did, that's where you want to be buying. And if I can add something that actually I talked to Ace about this, um, about this exact setup, because when I saw all that weakening, I just saw it as chop um, for the most part. And the point that Ace made with me is actually, if you look at a lot of those lower wicks, they all go to basically the same number. It's like 85. Um, it's like 585 is a lot of those lower wicks. And whoever is down there, like whether you want to say that's market maker or whoever it is that's down there, they are not letting it go past 585 ish. Like it keeps coming down to this 585, but they just keep soaking it up, like Vance is saying. Like the, that's just so whoever is down there is like, nope, I'm buying it. If you're going to sell it to me, I am buying it right down here at 585. And ultimately, if, if they just keep buying it there, there's only one direction to go at that point if, if they're not letting it go downward because they're buying it there the only way it can go is up yeah that's a good point but i mean on the reverse side you could say there's also a lot of selling at that 630 you know 625 630 right there you know so it's really hard to tell but tell. It's not, I mean, you would that be valid you know yes i see it, there's a lot of buying it's strong there at that 530 whatever level you just mentioned but I could kind of say the same at that 630 level too, kind of. No, but it, but it's not uniform. That's that's the part that should catch your eye. Is the selling up top isn't like there's like some set level where somebody just seems to have like bulk orders that continue buying at that same set level. Whereas down there at the lower wicks, somebody is constantly buying at 585. Like somebody is sitting there. And also. Yeah, yeah, like totally. ask yourself, who's in control here? All day it's the bulls. All day it's the bulls. Who's in control here? It's still the bulls, because it's still holding this higher low. It hasn't even tested previous um, supply yet. Um, and and if you're shorting up here, who's trapped? You know, it can't break down. It can't break down. It can't break down. Just soaking, soaking, soaking. It's still bears trapped. Bears are still trapped, right? And boom, it, uh, they they just got squeezed. Um, so we can go over another ticker, but if you guys, mate, if you uh, if you don't mind me just saying one thing, because I know you're probably touching it late, because you're telling me about it, but the stock ramps up like this just before after hours, but you should be doing this anyways. You always check for an S3.
Okay, I don't know if I'm said that he'll touch on that. I think he did in the prehand, but but many good traders already knew that the S3 was coming. They were so they already interpreted that it would be coming at that 405, and that's why you can see you know a bit of a sell level there. You know, right at close because most good traders see you know they were waiting for the rehash. You know, of the 405 rehash of the news. That's mainly when you get your after hours stuff. So people were expecting that filing and that's on how you've got to be you've got to be smart and always checking the filings on these because this would be the prime time when they do it and again they done it like 10 minutes before close didn't they yeah sorry for interrupting yeah for sure um so yeah everyone everyone knew like there was a, there was an offering at um just waiting to be dropped um and also ramping into close if you, just like how just how um just how um in pre market if if we get a ramp into into open, it's the same thing. It's usually bearish, um, and we get a ramp into close. It's it's, a, it's usually a bearish sign. But even here we kind of made new highs. But um, does anyone have another ticker that we can go over that ran up this week or had a huge run this week? We can go over. I'm thinking Escog, but or. But Escog was just Escog was just a monster. Um, maybe something like I don't know. Um, yeah, just if if anyone has a ticker. Um, Yo, Pam, can you hear me? Yeah. What's up? All right. Uh, I'm driving, but I'm listening along. Can you explain like the psychology uh, between like hammers, right? Like at the bottom of the downtrend, a hammer is. You know, a reversal, I was but why is a hanging man a reversal? Well, I wanted to look at it too, because that's not kind of random ass down. Escog? Okay, so anyway, so yeah, if we have a uh, if we have a hammer at, at the bottom of, of a trend, right, it's um, it's it's a bullish sign because you know, the, the, there's lower wicks, um, and it's rejecting off of um. You know, it's having some kind of support, but if we have a hammer on, on, on an on, on an uptrend on a on a, on top of a um uptrend, right? Um, let me just try to find one, real quick. Um, and it has some kind of crazy. This isn't really a um a hammer, but um, so that's called a um, it's called a hanging man. If we if you've read um the Anna Calling book. Here, right here. It's a um, it's a bear it's a bear signal, especially if there's um, high volume. So something like this, um, you can kind of call this a hammer. Not really a hammer, but this is kind of more of a hammer. Um, but yeah, it's called a hanging man. And if it's, if you have an inverted hammer where the body's on the bottom, it's called a um, a shooting star, right? Um, so yeah, it's just. It's just something you have to know. Um, you don't really have to know the names of them. Just, just mostly like the how they look and you know where it is on the chart. If it's just in the middle of like a, um, you know, in the middle of a trend, then it doesn't really matter. But if it's on the, on the top of a trend with with crazy volume, like something like this, then it's usually a huge indication of. Oh yeah, we had we had it on um what's it called? We had it on Verb. I remember. So right here on the 10 minute um so this would be a shooting star shooting star you know this is an invert inverse um inverted a hammer um but yeah because look it's, it's it's rejecting off price but still even if we did have it have a um a hammer that'd be called a uh, a hanging man It's just something to know. Hey, I got a question real quick. So, how how often do you flip between uh, the three and the ten minute chart? Uh, like, I mean, just on the fly, you just flip between the, to see things, or how? Oh, I, I guess how. Uh, yeah, I'll how just do you make your decisions. You know, <laughs> I'll just flip between the charts. Just um. Just if it's at it like a key level, if it's approaching a key level, I don't want to see how how it reacts to the to the level. For example, like um, on verb, you, you might be saying, "Hey, look, there's a um, 
there's a shooting star right here. It shouldn't be you be you be scaling out, and for sure you want to be scaling out right here, just to lock in some profits. And I remember scaling out some of my position right here, um, on verb um, on Thursday. Um, but you but just because you have a VPA signal, that doesn't mean um, you want to be. It's it's the very top, right? Um, sometimes sometimes you'll get signals like right here. Um, we have a, a doji, um, but even then on the 10 minute, it probably it looks, where is it? it? looks fine on the 10 minute. Um, but to answer your question, like I'll just be flipping through three minute, 10 minute, five minute, like. I'm mostly on the five minute. Um, if I'm entering into a position, like I said, I'm on the three minute. If I'm like entering or exiting a position, scaling out and whatnot at key levels. Um, but yeah, you sometimes, like I said, sometimes you'll get VPA signals that say, hey, you want to be scaling out. And for sure you want to be scaling out just to protect your capital. Um, and it'll, it'll still surpass it. So they're not, they're not signals to say, hey, scale out, get out the rest of your position. But most of the time, they are great signals to have. Um, if you've read the VPA book, you'll, you'll totally understand what I'm saying. Um, they're just um, these daily resistances. They're just they're just levels to watch for. And the signals are just levels. Um, they're just signals to watch for when you're entering or exiting position. Um, and on vice versa, like w when you have high volume, you know, on an uptrend, it's sync that signaling hey it's gonna it's gonna dip or it's even gonna knife you also get signals on a um on a downtrend where hey it's signaling strength right here so as you can see like on verb we, this um here let me just like we'll, we'll do this from scratch right i'm trying to teach you guys how to how to get these levels right so we'll, we'll do this from scratch again um so sometimes I'll start on the weekly depending on how good the chart looks. So this is like a perfect chart where there's like a lot of space. This is where what you want to be looking for. When there's like a lot of um, like clustered, like clustered stuff, like it's usually like not a, um, a great chart to, to, what's it called, play, whatnot. So something like this is a lot of space. So it's, it's perfect, like it's perfect to draw. Um, It's perfect to draw levels on. Like it's great to just play. And so first level I see is a one right here. Um, so I'm not trying to cheat, right? Pretend, pretend this hasn't even happened, right? So some key levels. Um, and you don't want to have too many levels, right? just want to see um and then there's something in between here so maybe i'll i'll get something from back here so it doesn't really matter what year it is like as long as the there's key wicks or even bodies to to draw out um i'd say we're good but look at that look how well respected these levels were um, so yeah, I, I kind of missed that, but I didn't really know, like, I didn't know it'd go that high, right? So sometimes, sometimes they go higher and something like that. So yeah, um... So holding this uptrend, let's go on the five minute and just go through intraday. Um, but yeah, look how well, look how well this, these these levels were respected. Um, peaks just above here. We'll just do this day for for an example. Um, we do have fifteen minutes left, so I'm gonna wrap this up real real quick. But we'll do some charting. Um, 
So we get a dip in the morning, right? Uh, we got a spike in the morning, but we get some some weakness candles on high volume. So you don't want to FOMO into these um, these um, like you don't want you, the last thing you want to do is is enter on a rip, right? So you you always want to enter on a dip, right? So it holds this um, we kind of got this ABCD holds this higher low, so you could be saying, okay, here's our um. A, here's our B, here's our C, right? Now, now the daily resistance is kind of, you know, it's hanging around there. So the closer it gets, it's just, the more it consolidates on low volume near daily resistance, the the more chances of hey this is on an uptrend it's it's peaking above daily resistance um there's a great chance that it's gonna it's gonna break above and it's gonna you know volume trust that volume is gonna take it to the next daily resistance so we got our a b c we also kind of get our little pennant right here intraday intraday pennant so this is right, pretty would your, would your entry be right there around that c and your risk off would be below the B. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, man, that's like, that's pretty textbook. Um, so you always want to be entering on a low volume pullback, like volume's tapering off. You get a nice dip. Sorry. We, you, we get a nice dip, it breaks above this pendant um and we're scaling out on these rips so personally for me like i said i scale out five percent a quarter a quarter on my position at five percent another another quarter at 10 um and then another quarter at around 15 to 20 percent and then i let the rest ride for for lottos um sometimes they'll go a hundred percent and other times i'll just you know lock it in at a a key level um, so we have 10 minutes left. Um, we can go over one more chart or we can do some Q and A. Um, I have been just rambling on so So, I mean, if, I, if anyone wants to jump in and ask some questions or, or, um, you know, No questions? Y'all gotta have some questions for me. If not, we can go over ALF. <laughs> so ALF had kind of had like this demand zone. So, so I don't just play, you know, daily resistances. I always look for like demand zones or supply zones. So we had a key level right here and, and it, and it kind of bounced perfectly. I didn't play this. I was kind of half asleep, but you know, look how well, look. Come on, talk about Oh, uh, I don't know what that was, but could you just briefly go over how you come up with your demand zones? And for sure. Okay, so um, for demand zones, um, when you get a so sometimes okay, there's two types of demand zones: rally based rallies and drop. Um, rally based rallies and sometimes you'll just get a red candle um and then a, a rip so so we have we have a red candle right here right so it's it's like okay let's say you didn't even look at the daily chart we, we can go over on the two two hour and we kind of had this base right here so this basing there's a lot of basing candles right so that just shows that hey, it had resistance. It had previous resistance. Um, that it cracked above, right? Look how the, the this was like the last last basing before a huge rally up. So if it ever approaches this zone again, we can we can we can draw a demand zone box. Um, 
and we can expect price to price to bounce right right off. Um, and how I draw them is is this is just my personal preference. I've seen you know people just draw them like this, and that's totally fine. That's what that's that's just personal preference, but it's all subjective, right? It's more of a um, it's more of an art, not a science. Um, so we had this rally right here. So this was like the last last red candle or like the last basing before a huge a huge move up. So this right here to me would be demand. Um, or if it isn't really a great example because it just went like seven hundred percent more than a seven like a thousand percent in one day, but. Um, we have about eight minutes left. Does anyone have any other questions? We can start wrapping this up. Um, I hope I hope you guys took something away from from my lessons. Um, we can go over drawing, um, you know, uh, these DRs once more just before getting out, um, finishing this up. Um, so this is how I personally drew my resistance levels or key levels on neg. Um, so we have, you know, a level right here, a level right there, right? You don't want to be going too crazy on the levels. You want to get some key levels. Um, and the more it went up, the more it had potential to continue. So I just kept, I just kept drawing these levels um, every time it rallied, right? Just for preparation that it'll hit the next daily resistance. Um, and then maybe one right here, because this is a huge gap up and like the bodies are pretty close to each other. Um, that's just on the monthly chart, right? Um, if it doesn't go too crazy, I'll go on the on the daily. So you can see on the daily, there isn't a lot. I had to go to the monthly to to draw those levels out. Um, What's up? <laughs> you your mic, man. <laughs> so we have five minutes left. Um, but you can kind of see like these levels were were respected. Um, literally to the penny, almost to the penny. Um, like I said before, these levels are, sometimes they'll go right to the penny, other times they'll just peek below it, take out all the stops and rip, rip right up. So you want to take into consideration your entries and exits. You don't want to put your whole position at a key level. Sometimes you'll, you'll scale in just before, I'll scale in just before, and then I'll scale down and then I'll, I'll, um, you know, I'll, um, well, this is like an extreme example because <laughs> it kind of went down like seven, ten percent but this is just like you know just based on tr chart relativity right um it's just peaks just below it holds view up rallies right back up um and here's another example this is a shooting star right here and you can see what happened after the shooting star we had it it tested supply once more and then it ramped right back down so like I said before, just because you have a VPA signal, that doesn't mean it's the very top. You'll uh, you'll sometimes get another retest before flushing down. Um, but yeah, we have five minutes left. Um, <clears throat> I've kind of been talking for an hour straight. If anyone want, has any other questions, I, I'll be gr glad to, to answer. Um, and yeah. What's your trading journey been like? I'm gonna ask the generic question. All right, so my trading journey. I've been trading about um, a little over a year now. Um, I remember like the first stock I bought was like Boeing and then like Neo and then, like XPEV and then I, I really had no idea what I was doing, right? Um, and then I discovered like FinTwit or whatever. 
I was doing a bunch of OTC stocks. I still had no idea what I was doing. I was just, you know, buying the pumps, um, selling, selling, and then just getting lucky. Um, <clears throat> and then I found Atlas. And then through Atlas, I was, you know, still, I still had no idea what I was doing. And then I found Momentum, like the Momo chat, or Momo team or whatever. Um, that's where I really started dialing in and developing my strategy. And my strategy mostly comes from Redessa um, and Maple Stacks, and you know, just a mix of a, a lot of traders like like Nathan M Mashad. Um, watching a bunch of YouTube videos, just trying to dial in on supply and demand, how to find these daily resistance levels, and you know what I should be looking for in volume. Um, and then I started reading. Um, the books on VPA from Anna Calling, like I just started reading them over and over, reviewing them. Um, I started, you know, all, like during this whole period of time, it's been like 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 seven months into trading. I, I started, um, well, I didn't start, but at this point, I was, I really started digesting um, Redessa's streams and and videos that were up on YouTube from from Scalper Ryan, um, and that's where I started getting consistent with my um with my entries and my exits and um you know cutting losses quickly because because i would before that i would just back hold right you know so like a, a fool would um tweet out a ticker and i would just bag hold bag hold bag hold hoping to just get out and i just at that point i was like okay i have to i really have to like stop screwing around and and develop something because if not then what the hell am i doing right so at this point, I started, you know, really dialing in, um, charting every night. And yeah, I mean, I have my own Discord, like my own personal Discord server where I just post a bunch of um, charts. Like I have a bunch of charts that I labeled annotate, you know, a trading journal, um, education video videos that I just like, that I save. Um, and yeah, that's my journey right now. And I found MTA through Twitter. Um, I was like, who's this Brad Momentum's guy? Cause he had like the same Twitter name as me. And I was like, let me just join. And, I was, and then I found out um, who he was and, and what he did and, and how successful he was. And that's just me dialing right now with my strategy. And I really started to dial in after joining MTA. So that's just my, my journey so far. Um, and yeah, now I'm here, so.